Do all FNAF theorists think the same? Today we will be answering that question with my good friends Underscore, Inky Ink and Psychic. You may want to think about putting this in the background and doing something else while you listen to it as this is going to be more of an audio kind of video rather than a watch through kind of video. <laughs> you can also listen to this on SoundCloud and possibly Spotify, but I'll update you on that. Okay, so let's get started. Okay, your first prompt is the FNAF theorist community is toxic. So I would be in the middle. Like, I don't disagree or strongly disagree, but I don't agree or strongly agree. I would say in the middle. Because there are definitely some toxic people in the community. But then there are also some very good people. Like, a lot of some of the YouTubers are good, they're respectful, and some, like, even like some like theorists in Discord are respectful. But then there are the, some that are like, um, who just like say my I my idea is my my way of thinking is correct. Anything you say is wrong, and I will let you know you're wrong. In 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 like like so much, because I mean that's just like the problem with theories. People don't often change their opinions based on evidence because they're like I'm right, you're wrong, and they just don't listen, which makes the community toxic in my opinion. I would say I I'm going between strongly agree and slightly agree. Uh, okay. but I, I can't really pick which one. I'm just going to go strongly cuz I see it a lot. Uh a big problem with the FNAF theorizing community is that while there are some respectful people, everyone at most people at least once have like a moment of just seeing the the debate for a debate and not actually trying to figure out the story through the evidence it oftentimes becomes a war of theories like oh your golden duo oh your bv fifth uh i invalidate your opinion forever now just based on that title that i've been that i have given to you and it's not even about fnaf anymore it's just about a little petty fight and i i I'm really trying to be an example of t toning it back, removing emotions from theory debates, and talking about what the games and books have to offer from a strictly factual uh, standpoint. Okay, so I would say I uh, lightly disagree. I mean, not disagree, agree. Not strongly agree, but just slightly agree. In the way that when it comes to theorizing on YouTube and on Discord, you're going to run into a lot of people that are either super stubborn with their ideas or just general idiots who don't know what they're talking about. Which really sucks when all you want to do is get to the bottom of things, but these people are kind of in your way. So, and yeah, there are good theorists that have malleable opinions and if they see evidence to change those then they'll change their ideas but then there's the people who praise a certain theory as their kind of religion and they just won't change it for anything so yeah there okay. is there is some some good some bad i'd say a lot more bad than good though it's hard to find good theorists personally i i i agree with it with psychic i think i think a lot of it, a lot of the community is um, is a good theorist, such as you guys. Um, like you listen to other people, um, and you take into consideration different theories, not just your own. Um, but a lot of people simply take their own theory and just won't change from that. I think it's called uh, the confirmation bias, where once you have um, a, a belief or a theory, then you will look for more evidence just to support the theory, and you'll like t um, cherry pick, what, well, like push away all other evidence um, that like destroys your theory. Um, also, I, I saw this cool thing online where it's like 
a lot of people who have strange beliefs, they will look for a conclusion and then look for evidence for that conclusion. Um, whereas good theorists, they tend to gather evidence together and then make a conclusion from that, if you know I, what I'm saying. I put that in your Discord. Right. I put that in your Discord. Did you? Yeah, I, I put that, like, that like, quote that I, I, I found that I put in your Discord. Nice. Uh, I... Just to, yeah, just to summarize that, I, I think half and half, really. I think the, the community as a whole is okay, so I think I'd be in the middle. Okay, the next prompt is... The FNAF timeline is solvable. I'm I'm torn between agreeing and disagreeing. I think I'm going to agree, but only slightly. See, the problem with the FNAF timeline, and this has been the problem for a long time at this point, Scott intended the first three games to be it. And then the fourth one. And then he added Sister Location on it. I feel like from Sister Location on, the story's been set. But, like, the first three games, first three, four games, the timeline for those ones, like, conflicts because the whole story wasn't planned. So, I think it, I think it is solvable, but it'll be tough because evidence contradicts each other. Uh, personally, I would strongly agree. If, I mean, obviously we can fit the events that we see in the games together cohesively as they were intended, and even though... Uh, like what Psychic said, even though 1 through 3 and to an extent 4 were kind of it, their own story, I believe Scott has been able to add onto it without disrupting that timeline too much. Because I do think it is very possible to add new lore without breaking the old lore, even if it's a bit outlandish, like some of the stuff in Sister Location with the whole scooping and everything. Uh, so I would say strongly agree. It is sometimes pretty tough due to general vagueness and, uh, lots of assumptions that a lot of people have, but I do think it is solvable. Do I think it is currently solved? No. Uh, but I do think it is solvable. Now, I will say that I do believe it, it is absolutely solvable, but I wouldn't, considering what we've learned from, like, uh, step closer and what? Well, which one was it? Step closer and like the Citrate. I wouldn't say it was solvable. I would. I I still would have said it was solvable before those stories, but I don't think I would have meant it. Considering a lot of stuff from those books has really shown us a new picture that we had no idea of. Like the idea of Golden Duo before the Fazbear Frights books would have been impossible nobody would have agreed with it nobody would have thought of it and that's why i do think it's solvable but we there's a little there's some stuff that we just didn't know like some certain ideas that we couldn't have known about so i'll say it is certainly solvable it's unsolved and i'm hoping the fast frights books could help me too uh i actually i'm gonna create a contradiction here um i actually disagree i slightly disagree uh and I think I'm the complete opposite to to Inky and Psychic, and I think that FNAF one to four was a a collective story. I think ma mainly like off of four games, one story. I think all of that was clarified as one full story, and then when he kept adding more games, uh, it became more and more complicated. And I don't think there's one, you know, like straight timeline. Um, I think there's too much conflicting information. Um, I think, in a way, Mr. Hippo in FNAF uh, Ultimate Custom Night, Scott was like trying to tell us, like, this is just a story, you know, don't, don't think too hard about it. Uh, I don't know if that was a joke or not, but I, I do think there's too much conflicting information. And in a way, with Security Breach, he's kind of resetting the timeline in some senses. And so I, I, I don't know. I, I, I do disagree, though. I, I don't think there is one solvable timeline. I feel like if if people got like together and went ga went from the first game to to like I mean from to, from FNAF um, sister location on the story is basically known. 
So if they went from FNAF 1 to FNAF 5 and, like, went through all and, like, took a step back and looked at all the data, all the evidence, it might be solvable. Like, I feel like people... I, I feel like a step back would be very helpful in solving a timeline. I agree, but... You know, you, I, like, the, Scott's intention in FNAF 1 wasn't the same intention as Scott's intention now when he's creating the security breach. Yeah. So I think there's there's gonna there's always gonna be like information in FNAF one that is now wrong, if you if you know what I mean, because his intention of the story has changed a lot since then. So I, I would, don't know. <laughs> I would I would agree with that, but I also, like I said earlier, I believe uh Scott can take stuff that he established maybe with a different intention and still use it in the story without conflicting too much so while things in fnaf 1 through 4 probably meant something a little different back then i still think they work as far as the larger story as we have it but that's just my opinion didn't scott say he did one major retcon and that was it i believe so was that for sister location? Not sure. Like we don't. I don't think we ever really found out exactly what the retcon was. If I had to take a guess, it'd probably be Golden Freddy. Okay, let's have a discussion about whether or not Matt Pat's FNAF theories are overrated. I am going to disagree. I and I'm not saying that because I I've watched Game Three even like before FNAF. I. See, the thing, like, when I watch, like, the FNAF theories, he does a really good job of pointing out small details that could mean stuff and drawing conclusions from that. And I respect him as a theorist because he's not the person who's like, say, like, this is the conclusion. Let me find evidence for the conclusion, like we were talking about earlier. Now, I will agree, there are some theories that were not right, or, like, he just, like, I guess, like, he like, wasn't thinking about it all the way, or, like, he made some wrong con- conclusions, like the whole FNAF 1 in 2003, or Glitch Trap is Shadow Bonnie in FNAF 3. Like, stuff like that, like... I mean, yeah, he disagrees with, but, like, there's, like, other stuff to that he talks about that's right. And he even, like, got like, Scott to say, like, one of his theories are, like, for the timeline was, like, really good. I don't remember which one it was, but... Now, this is gonna sound a bit crazy, uh, considering I got a lot of my subscribers from actually being in a Game Theory FNAF video, but I am going to have to slightly agree, and I'm gonna explain myself, because I don't, I don't particularly think MatPat is overrated, but I, there's a, there's a problem that can be, how do I explain this? MatPat is a very, very important theorist because obviously he has a huge audience, a huge impact on the way people think about FNAF, so that can be a very much uh, double-edged sword. If he's on the right track, it is incredibly important for like maybe people, especially maybe younger theorists who don't really look at the evidence too much and sort of just take whatever uh, people like Matt Pat say at face value and uh, judge completely by that. And I think that would absolutely be a problem, especially when uh, Matt Pat's a little off track. Um, But in general, because of that, I can't say that he isn't slightly overrated because he has that subset of people who would just, like, all right, it was on Game Game Theory said it was, uh, said it was, said this is how it is, this must be how it is. And because of that, I can't really say he is not because of that. But in general, I'd say he he puts in good work and he makes some good theories, a very good presenter of evidence, uh, well, sometimes, obviously, uh, and very good and concise usually, so no no shade on MatPat, but I think the game theories on FNAF can be slightly overrated. Okay, 
so uh, pertaining to this question, I would say that his theories are not overrated. To be honest, the other day, uh, while writing a new script, not telling you, um, I watched. I was I was binging some of the old ones, and the old ones are so amazing to just rewatch and remember what was. And I don't think I don't think they're overrated. There have been some recent ones of hit by him, which, as we've all said, are the the uh, kind of the two thousand three uh, one with the the strange glitch trap ideas. Yeah, that was a weird one, but I don't think they're overrated. And it, it just depends on how much people believe him. Like that theory, if anybody believes it, they have to just be a person who only listens to game theory and just believes everything he's, everything Matt Pat says. And it's okay to consider his ideas, but you have to actually believe in it to, you know, you have to have evidence. You have to see it being correct. So I wouldn't say they're overrated, just... Some people might take them a bit too far. Yeah, I I, I think it's mainly just his massive following, um, and and people just say whatever he's people just take whatever he says for granted, um, whether or not it's right or wrong, um, or if it's a good theory or, or bad theory. So I think I'm in I think I'm in a bit of the middle because I agree a lot with what Inky said and underscore you're also. Um, like right in a lot of aspects. So I think I'm going to have to be in the middle. If I had to make one change to my position, I would pro- I, I guess I would, after thinking about it a bit more, I would probably be a little bit towards the middle. Uh, and uh, this may or may not just be backpedaling because like I, uh, uh, Matt Pat, you know, did the, did the shout out thing, but uh, 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 ba- basically slightly agree, but more towards neutral, I guess. Yeah. Okay. I was just about to say, like, I think he's trying new things, and, like, he can't be right all of the time, obviously. Yeah, of course. Um, of course, he's human. But when Every, you, everyone like, makes mistakes. Yeah, yeah, underscore, you know this, right? Like, when you try new things that are completely out there, you try new theories, like, you know that a lot of people aren't going to believe it. You just kind of have to, like, take your mind out of your head and then kind of, like... Put it in a different. I don't know where I'm going with this, but think outside the box. Yeah, I guess. I guess you could say that. And um, hasn't Matt had done that before? Like with the whole orange guy is Henry thing. Like he had that theory, and he was like, "Now I don't like necessarily yeah. believe it, but like here's something to think about." Which that, I felt like that was. Oh yeah, that one. Yeah, I I feel like he should have done that with the last one because like it was it was similar where it was like, yeah this makes sense in some regards, but like in other parts it's like it's out there. But I think this goes back to the conversation of like toxic theorists. because mm-hmm. um, a lot of people would again will just set take what he says for granted and then just stick to that belief. Um so in a way it's overrated, but I wouldn't say I mean his theories are good. Like they're well researched and stuff. They really are. Like, some people he, he puts effort yeah. into them. The next thing we'll be talking about is Scott's intention for FNAF 4 was the dream theory. I strongly agree. I think that at at the time of FNAF 4, maybe not so much anymore, like with the whole nightmares, the the mini games, the post he put on his website, and the box, like, I feel like he intended dream theory, but, and, like, the whole post that he said, like, oh, if, like, with the, with the post about the box, it's like, oh, if people, if, you know, if if I, like, confirm this, it'd be like, oh, it's a cop-out, you know, it was all a dream, because people hate that kind of stuff, but originally, I feel like he did intend dream theory, and it's also, like, there's also, like, he also says something, like, he didn't put any easter eggs, all, everything has a purpose, like, okay, well, there's the, like the the IV and the flowers in his room, also um it, during the gameplay, and also the whole like, isn't there like some sort of like distorted phone guy call in FNAF Four? Yep. Like, I, like if that was if that wasn't an Easter egg and that was like a clue, we still haven't figured out what that meant. Well, 
We have, but... Oh, we have? Oh, well... Okay. Yeah, pretty much. Oh, well, then. Never mind. <laughs> Never mind. <laughs> um, but yeah, I, I do think it was supposed to be Dream Theory. For me, I would say slightly agree. Because a lot of the same reasons Psychic had... If you take one through four and look at it from that sort of story angle where it's the the mind of the dreamer, the obviously the bite victim probably, and all the different all the different clues Scott dropped, especially during that uh, one game theory live stream with a bunch of other theorists, where he said things like things seen in the shadows can often be like misunderstood in the eyes of a child or something like that, especially the why would the toy chica mini figure be missing its beak that one in particular is what really leads me to believe that dream theory was probably the intention because that's such an odd detail to point out obviously nowadays it could be uh used as evidence to suggest that the uh that the kids in the neighborhood in the fnaf 4 mini games become the toy animatronics I'm not completely sure about that, but th I feel like that could be a way that that clue was repurposed. But as far as back when it first existed, it just makes a lot of sense for it to be the original intention, for me at least. And obviously he did change that. Um, I think potentially even in response to the One Game Theory video uh, about how, while that would be the true answer that it wouldn't be a satisfying one, sort of like Psychic said, but, yeah, my stance is slightly agree. I do think that the original story was probably a dream. And that is also where I think the the major retcon that Scott said, I believe it could be that. So, I will say agree. And that is because there's just, at, at the time, there was too much substantial evidence to say, to, to suggest dream theory, especially that Toy Chica Beak thing. But of course, that's now not the that that's that's not the the goal of FNAF. That's that was, I suppose, is that is that do, can you count that as a retcon? Because it was his original intention, intention, and now it's changed with everything after sister location said. Okay, these are these are real events; they're not dreams. I believe it would be a retcon because, mm -hmm. uh, as he's as he said in that sort of thing. If Dream Theory was the intention, he had evidence pointing to that. So changing the meaning of that evidence uh, in a harsh contradiction to the original intention of that evidence, I would I would say is a retcon. Then that's my stance. It was substantiated, but now it's not. So I would agree that it was his original intention. Yeah, before when we were talking about retcons, I was going to bring in Dream Theory, but I thought I'd wait. I, I really, like, I thought we'd get a few disagrees actually here, but... We, we all seem to agree, so this is awkward. Um, but I strongly <laughs> agree with the statement. I really think there's just too much evidence for Dream Theory. and It can't be anything else, really. Uh, you guys have mentioned the Toy Chica beak and the shadows. Um, it's one of the things, like, Game Theory, or game, the Game Theorists were actually one of the reasons I really, really believed in this. Um yeah, and it was it was the that episode where it was like the grandfather clock. Oh, you know, the clock! You know, the grandfather chime at the, the end clock. of it. That, uh huh? <laughs> yeah, yeah. That, was... that was like that was really like compelling evidence towards it, and it was it kind of blew my mind in some senses. And psychic, you're right. Like you don't want to believe dream theory because it is like. A god theory. It's, it's an overpowered theory. Because um, then nothing matters. It's the only one. Yeah, it it's too. There's too many like coincidences for. What was I gonna say? I don't know. But like the FNAF more mini games, like you see all of the animatronics in different forms in in those mini games, and it's just. Yeah, it's it's the only thing that makes sense, really. So I think he he did intend dream theory, and then he retconned it. Persistent location. The next thing we will be talking about is there was nothing in the FNAF 4 box. I actually am going to 100% strongly disagree. I think, wait, 
disagree is I think there was something in the box, right? Yes, you're disagreeing. There is something in the box. Yes, and I know for a fact there was something in the box, because in Scott's interview with Daco, when talking about MatPat's box theory, he was like, yeah, the contents did change, so there was stuff in the box. I rest my case. I was uh, I was about to say the same thing, so I also strongly disagree because it's not really something, uh, it's not really something you can agree with because, like Psychic said, Scott has explicitly said that the contents of the box changed over time, implying that there are contents there to begin with. So, yeah. This is this is funny. It's like. Uh... You ever hear hear of Schrodinger's cat? This is this is Scott's box. There's something <laughs> inside. We just have absolutely no idea what it was, and it changes constantly. I will say with a hundred percent certainty that there is something in the box, though we can never be certain. So who what kinds of people are gonna say there's nothing inside the box? The box Probably is the people who had an... six location. <laughs> um Hello. Oh no! So, <laughs> Inky, <laughs> Inky, your point, your point about um, uh, what did you say? <laughs> I don't know. You um, said like um, you can't, you can't possibly agree. Well, watch me. Um, <laughs> it's, no, no, no. I just have like, I get your points. I, I honest, I honestly get your points. Um, but I feel like Scott said. Scott was like going to do something with the box, but he never did anything with it. Really, I think it was just like kind of there, just to kind of tease us, and then nothing ever happened. And it makes me wonder, like, if that. <laughs> it's a really hard situation. Uh, I agree. I agree with that. Uh, I agree that it was planned to do something, but it was never really touched upon again. However, I don't think that means there was never anything in there to start. The question turns from, do you think, think there's something in the box, to what was in the box? Yeah, I don't, I, I don't know. For some reason, I just don't think it ever went anywhere, and I don't think there was anything... I don't know. I, I, like, you guys do make good points, though, so I might have to change to, like, so, in Oz the middle. So, Ozone, what I'm hearing from you is, like, you, you're, like, you think, like, he was going to make something in the box after it went somewhere, like... Say he was like actually going to confirm dream theory, or you think like, let's then would you say like, oh there's stuff related to that in the box like after he confirmed that, but like when the box was shown there was nothing in it. Is that what you're trying to say? I'm a little confused. In a in a way, like I feel like he was trying to set something up with the box, in some senses, but it didn't go anywhere. Yeah. Um, at the same time, it could be something metaphorical. I don't know. I don't, I, I don't know. I, I think I'm going to have to, because you guys did make good points, so I'm going to have to go from, like, agree to in the middle. And that's what makes a good theorist, guys. We're it tying does. it all back together. Yeah. <laughs> I'm this, not toxic. This, this entire time, we've been focusing on question number one. <laughs> <laughs> it's, all, it's all a subset <laughs> yeah. of question one. Oh, yeah. It really is. This is all okay. just a test to see if you guys are toxic or not. <laughs> question, question 1A, question 1B, you know, all that. And finally, Fazbear Frights are better than the original trilogy of books. If there was something above Strongly Agree, I would pick that. I love the Fazbear Frights books. They are so much better than the trilogy. <laughs> okay, the, tr the trilogy. Well, yes, good books at the time. Now, they have plot holes, they're convoluted, they sometimes, like, at some points they feel more like just trying to explain lore rather than, like, telling a good cohesive story, and that just, like, annoyed me, and, but the Fazbear, and, like, the Fazbear Fright books, on the other hand, they're, like, yes, they have parallels, but the main point of them is just to tell a scary story, and you can, like, draw out so many parallels, they're fun to read. They're fun to watch other people read. Heck, one of my best friends just started reading them, and they're talking to me, and I'm like, "What do you think of this?" I'm like, "Oh, I love that." I'm like, what about this? like there's like so and there's like different interpretations, and I just really love the Fazbear Fright books, and I'm so glad that they confirmed ten and eleven the other day. 
Like, there's gonna be, like, there's probably gonna be, like, up to, like, 15 at this point, I think. Because, like, they're not gonna end at, like, number 11. Who does that? Maybe end at 12, I don't know. Eh, maybe. 12, He's gonna end them when we have it all figured out, that's what. Yeah. Hey. 300 books later. I would love that! Alright. He can't make that many stories. Coming maybe. next week. <laughs> Coming next week, Fazbeth writes Infinity. <laughs> Infinity War! <laughs> yes! Stitch Fazbeth okay. writes X. St- the Fazbear, sequel. Fazbear Frights, the final one, is just like just like one big Stitch Wraith book. That would be amazing. Like Everyone comes together. Oh, that would be amazing! The tale of the Stitch Wraith. So, I'm not quite as opinionated as Psychic, but I am also going to <laughs> slightly agree. And I liked the original trilogy. Yes, they had some weirder bits. Basically, I, I love Silver Eyes. Silver Eyes was really good, yeah. except for one plot hole that I still don't really understand, um, which I'll get into in a sec if we want. Twisted Ones is also really good. The Fourth Closet is kind of a confusing mess, um, but I still enjoyed reading it. As for the... And I, I, I definitely agree with Psychic. They don't really tell a wonderfully cohesive story. Obviously, there are hints that everything was planned from the start, and it, it was all... It, nothing really was broken up or, or like written as they went like maybe i don't know the star wars sequels um <laughs> but yeah you can tell that like obviously um i don't know spoiler alert they've been out for a while so spoiler alert you can you can tell from the silver eyes that charlie's intended to eventually be a robot but um obviously they don't they don't shove that down your throat until like the fourth closet as far as fazbear frights books i do definitely like them they you know, uh, the the authors there, like uh, Ellie Cooper, Andrea Wagner, they are good at writing characters, and they write some dang good characters, and they make you feel things when those characters end up going through things. Yeah. Um, sometimes, sometimes you're enjoying kind of what they're going through, like uh, maybe the guy in, in the flesh, like he gets what he deserves. Uh, other times you feel genuinely like robbed, like maybe Stanley in Room for One More. Um, what was it? Wasn't his name? His name is Stanley, right? Okay, uh, it is Stanley, uh, right? Uh, other times you get really hard hitting emotional ones like coming home, and then you get the really suspenseful and honestly short film quality stories like The Man in Room 1280. Uh, so I would say that they are better than the original trilogy. Uh, I still like the original trilogy though, and I think they all have their own. Uh, their own benefits uh, to read them. Oh, and as far as the plot hole in Silver Eyes, I have no idea how um, how Purple Guy can can describe what happens in a Springlock and have his scars without you know being inside a Springlock suit and gargling mess because he says your vocal cords get snapped right away, but he's here talking and has scars already. Like, how did he get out? Uh, but anyway, that's I, all I have to say. <laughs> I suppose that is kind of a tricky question. I haven't. I haven't exactly paid that much attention to the lore of the trilogy because we haven't really needed to, you know. Disagree. What? I really love the trilogy. And to me, who joined FNAF around Sister Location, those books are classic. And I really love the story, the characters. It's all really interesting. And I don't care if it's not exactly cohesive. It's still an alternate depiction of the events that we've seen. And one reason I can't really love the Fazbear Frights books for their stories is that, then again, I'm only reading... How I've put myself into this, I'm only reading them to look for, like, evidence to theories or evidence to debunk theories. It's kind of, I suppose, tiring when all you're reading them for and all you know that they've really been made for. Yeah, they tell interesting stories, but then again they're mainly there for lore to the main series so i can't say i like them i can say i like the lore of the main series you know so i'll say i do like the trilogy doesn't mean i don't like faster frights books but i do enjoy the trilogy a lot more i should reread it i would i would encourage you to sort of uh rethink that mindset going into faster frights books a little bit i sort of what i do at least i read the book for the story and then go back and think about the lore afterwards. And I think that's a really good way to 
to approach it, but you, yeah, you can do it your way as well. Yeah, you're 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 crazy. So, uh, I want to add one more <laughs> thing. I didn't say this while I was on my little rant, but at the, like I do still like the trilogy. I just like Fast for Fights more. Like when I when like when like I remember when the Twisted Ones came out. I was like at a summer camp and I was reading it on my tablet. And when the like with like like the cliffhanger ending, I was like. What? No, I want to read more. It's like, I like the stories. Like, I just like one more. Like, underscore that. That doesn't mean and, I don't like the trilogy. And I like the trilogy. For me, some, something about the vibe of these kids who used to live in the town when the... Mur these kids that aren't the murdered kids or somehow connected, just kind of... I suppose Charlie's connected, but just these kids that were there around the murders are all rejoining in their old dead town to kind of go back and see Freddy's. It's just a really cool idea, and I really like it. Um, yeah, it's an absolutely amazing concept. Yeah. I, I definitely agree with that. Yeah. They are good books. I, I, oh, I don't know if I said that when I was talking about how much I love that. I'm sorry to be a downer, but I personally didn't really enjoy... The trilogy as much as I, I think other people did i i think i think it was the characters or something i i just didn't i was i wasn't really feeling it um but i don't know it's still it's still an okay trilogy of books but i would have to strongly agree with the statement in the fact that fast birth rights is so much better um psychic i agreed with everything that you said um inky i really loved like the different genres as you say like this one's sad this one's like a movie kind of plot. Um, the the thing I think I I want to point out about Faz Beth Wright's books are the Stitch Wraith stories. I uh, think that's such an original and cool concept with the fact that at the end of every book, we get a little bit more about this story and it's building up. Um, and also like the lore aspects as well, of course. I, I just really like how, how Scott is, has, is doing things. And I, I think I really like the stories best stories i've ever read i think now i will admit to something i do usually the main three stories are kind of tedious but for the citrate i am actually really looking forward to see where the story goes regardless of lore which i i'm really into the citrate story because realize these three stories are things we'll never hear much from again but the citrate is ongoing it's continuous like the the trilogy was i guess i'm just looking for a little more stable ground while reading a book and because if i get too attached to one of those three stories it we're never going to see more from it right and but the, another thing that stitch does is that it does uh tie in a lot of those as well like with the yeah. haunted objects and stuff so it is it is generally a good uh a bookender uh, uh way to tie it all in um i yeah yeah that, that's the another reason i like puzzle for more is like it's more i feel like it's more horror than the other ones like than the trilogy like i yeah. feel for these characters like you like especially like with stuff like i especially realized that with like lonely freddy like especially like that's when i think of right away where it's like you see this character grow and get better also a step closer and then just like you start to feel for the character and then it just doesn't work and you just feel bad and like it makes you think and like like, my friend just finished reading Room for One More, and we're talking about, like, how creepy that is, and how, like, disturbing yeah. it is. And, like, it's the kind of horror that sticks with you, and I love that so much, and it makes you think. I will say, In the Flesh had me shaking, like, literally. Um, to be beautiful mm -hmm. is just... Like the plot of that is just insane. The final, the final, so like, creepy. sentences is, like, bone chilling. I know, I know. I, I just, there's so many of the stories that I can just pick out and say that one just had me. Yeah. Um, I'll yeah. admit, a couple got to me too, but not exactly many. Thank you guys so much for watching today's video. If you did enjoy, make sure that you give this video a like and you subscribe to me so that you can see my next upload. I am going to get a drink now, so yeah, lovely.